Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. Recently we were doing that Earl Hooker, Will My Man Be Home Tonight, which of course that led me to back to Otis Rush. And you know, I really haven't done a lot of Otis Rush. And I thought I would start at the beginning, or close to the beginning, his uh, Cobra stuff. Um, according to the discography, this has Lewis Myers on the other guitar for It Takes Time. Um, Pitch-wise, it sounds like F-sharp, but there's this weird ching sound that makes me think it was actually in G. But um, I'll go ahead and do it in F-sharp, and I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. So let's start with the bottom guitar. It would really help while you play this to think the solo or to think your own solo. Practice in your head. No turnaround. See how lame that sounded? Hey guys, let's turn, you know, you know, you don't have to do that. So and here we start. So what that was, first finger, second fret, it's a box, our box car. Um, and then, of course, you got the reverse box, reverse box car, but this is just the box. You're sort of walking down the guitar. And then fourth fret A string. All downstrokes sound good. It sounds kind of mechanical to go alternate picking. The downstrokes give it a more push. So, so far we're at. And then let's come up. Second fret D string. And then our that's it. He pulls off on the fourth fret and then pick this in one. Fourth fret A string. So the whole deal. Yeah. So now that we got that out of the way, I think you guys can probably get through the whole form. Four times on the one. And then you move everything towards the floor. It sounds sometimes it's confusing to say up or down. It's like, is this up or is this up? So, you know, towards the floor, starting off the A string. And then for your five. Let's try it one more time. That last part was wrong. All right, that was pretty much the first 12 bars. All right, so there's a lot to talk about there. Let's try it out. So this intro, this is something that everybody's been running with forever, right? Fourth fret, G string, bend it up. It's a lot easier to use your second finger behind your third finger to bend this note. Here we go. And then you gotta use your, your first finger set up, ready to go, second and second. Then he puts that extra note in there just to make it cooler. Or whichever you prefer, I think it's this. Nice big wide vibrato. I always call it scratching the mosquito if you do a bend and then vibrato it. You put it where you want to and then you back it off like you're, like you're scratching a mosquito bite. Nice slow vibrato, not too... That sort of ruins the effect, doesn't it? Then he answers that up top. He's already like freaking out. Or, uh, you know, he's already going for a climax, like right at the top. It just grabs you. That's how this code is. That's how this uh, Cobra stuff is. I messed that one up. Yeah. Later on, he started like bumping into the G string and making those two notes cry. But on this record, I don't think he's doing that. 
Notice how we sort of tug this note. This is 14th fret and 17th fret B string. Push it up a little bit. It's like Robert Nighthawk or something. And then all the way up. And then scratch the mosquito real nice and slow. And then he does something amazing to get out of there. Starts on the 14th fret. Walks all the way down. And he vibrato's that A string. He doesn't play that note real loud. Those notes real loud, but those notes really loud, but that's how he, that's what it sounds like to me. So. Ah. You don't have to pick every note. You can sort of do pull offs. And then we're on the five, on the four. And he goes, he does a repeat. And then try this. That's like more crying, right? 17th and 14th. And then do that same bend that we did on the G string down here, up here. And then we're going back to the one. And that's the good part. He goes, you know who does this all the time? Bother Smith. I know we got it from Otis Rush. And then he waits and, and does it in a slightly different count. So, so. Now let's. Now we're back on the one. Same notes. It's a little bit harder to play down here, right? So that's the first solo. It's funny, the solo is kind of like the intro solo inside out. You know, when he's in the beginning, when he's up here, he's down here. So anyway, I'm gonna just take a pass at it. Not exactly note for note because time doesn't totally permit all the note for note. So anyway, he has some great fills uh, going up to it. So if you knew this, if you knew the intro, then you can do this. Yeah. So, okay, let's start with the, uh, the first so go around of, of the solo. He goes. And then, like last time when he was up here, now he's down here. Anyway, I know I'm doing that little part wrong, but let's try this. Um, a variation would be... I think he does stuff like that in other places. Yeah. It's real pentatonic -y. It just has this magic to it. Yeah. And the rest of that solo is all kind of down here. It's stuff right in here with the uh, second fret, fourth fret. And then he has a real cool way of getting out of it. I love that real sharp thing that is. And then this, you have to sort of drag. I'm talking about the beginning of the second solo now. And you hear this note, I think by accident, that's what makes me think it's really in G. So if you, and he accidentally bumped into the high E string, that would make total sense. But I'm teaching it in F sharp because if you listen to the record, pitch wise, it's in F sharp. But if you want to do it in G, that's great. And then you could get, you could even get that crazy wacky note. I've moved up to G now. 
It's something like that. It's like, what? What is that? You know, obviously he bumped into it or something, you know? Um, and of course he's upside down and everything left-handed. So anyway, good luck with that. You can pick F sharp, RG, and then... But I like the way F sharp feels. It feels good. And then you have these open strings. You know, when you want to, when you're in F sharp. So I like F sharp. But um, anyway, that's kind of a rundown of the intro and then the first go around of the solo. And, and then the second go around is this a uh, rhythm groove thing, which is just cool. It feels really good. It might feel like, gee, I'm not shredding enough. But uh, believe it, it's going to be great. You know, people really respond to these like... <laughs> I wonder if it's like a Freddie King thing. I think they were all influencing each other, you know? Um, I don't know. Anyway, if you have some Otis Russ stories, obviously he was one of the all-time greats. I got to see him. I wish I had seen him more times than I did, but I did get to see him often um, in the 80s um, in Chicago. And uh, I know so many people miss him so much. I'd love to hear your Otis Rush stories. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this look at It Takes Time. We're definitely going to come back to some more Otis Rush. Like, I love his version of I Wonder Why. Um, have a great one. Thanks for your support. Join me on Patreon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And see you next time.